ब्रह्म ज्ञान चिरंधस्य ज्ञानंजन शलाकाया चक्षुर मिलित येन तस्मय श्री गुरवे नम said in his last arrival address in Vrindavan I have nothing new to say but what we have to say about Srila Prabhupada's book distribution mission although in one sense not new is always fresh you are all very fortunate to be engaged in this service it's the best way a young man could spend his time engaged in this all merciful mission of bringing the supreme absolute truth krishna to people who don't know him at all it's amazing chaitanya mahaprabhu's leela how he's bringing the highest treasure of love of krishna to the most unqualified uninterested people and using uh, people like ourselves as his instruments there's a story i heard shortly after i joined the temple in london that uh, every day the devotees there they used to go up and down Oxford Street on Harinam and distribute back to Godhead magazines. So one day Prabhupada was sitting in his room in London uh, in the middle of the morning and he just started laughing. And Devi asked Prabhupada why are you laughing? And Prabhupada said Narad Muni is laughing to see the malicious chanting Hare Krishna. And then the devotee inquired more and Prabhupada explained that the devotees were out in the streets and Narad Muni was there with them. and actually in that temple which is right in the heart of london it's a real sankirtan spot right as soon as you walk out the door so prabhat had two small vyasa sons put right on the altar he said one is for brahma and one is for narad muni they're always sitting here so that's a fact that you can practically perceive that if you're out there on the front lines distributing prabhat's books that chaitanya mahaprabhu krishna prabhat and all the parampara are with you is it you can appreciate that ah uh, and actually if we're in that consciousness then we can distribute books we can't distribute any books we don't have any power to do so if we go out and think today i'm going to distribute a lot of books we can't distribute anything the only way we can do anything is if we simply pray to chaitanya mahaprabhu to become an instrument in his hands so it's a very intense service because you're out there confronting maya in all her glories face to face eyeball to eyeball and praying to chaitanya mahaprabhu that please let these people take these books even though we may be very near fight devotees it immediately forces us into the topmost platform of god realization that is chaitanya mahaprabhu's audarya bhav or mood of uh, great magnanimity the uh, krishna he enjoys his pastimes up to the level of madhurya or sweetness chaitanya mahaprabhu's pastimes they're of course very sweet but they become even sweeter by distributing them to one and all that is called audarya or magnanimity and uh, from the external point of view it may seem that there's some young man standing on a street trying to sell some books but actually what is going on is a very uh, intimate exchange of the devotee with his worshipable lord mm-hmm. this topmost position is uh, even far more elevated than that of yogis in caves or devotees worshiping deities in ancient temples for many years maybe you know the story that uh, two of prabhupada's disciples in vrindavan they visited the radharaman temple which is one of the famous temples there. so they were american devotees and they were they spent a long time looking at the deities with, with the deity with great devotion and um, one of the pujaris seeing this he said that oh you see you have such nice devotion for radharaman he said as a result of this in your next life you will be able to be born in india and worship the deities like this so when the devotees returned to the iskon temple prabhupad was there and they told him this anecdote prabhupad said that you should have replied to him that because of the devotion you have in worshiping the deity you may be fortunate enough to to in your next life be born in the western countries and preach krishna consciousness all over the world <laughs> this is actually the topmost method of worship sankirtan pravartak shri krishna chaitanya sankirtan jagge jay bhaje shri dhamna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the inaugurator of the Sankirtan movement and who worships him by the sacrifice of Sankirtan 
is glorious and blessed. Of course, we may not always realize this. A lot of time we're struggling with our mind and our senses. But if we can overcome that struggle on the lower platform, then Krishna will reveal himself to us. Especially so by this uh, Sankirtan sacrifice. Of course, uh, Sankirtan devotees shouldn't think themselves better. But on the other hand, they are in one sense more favored by Krishna. Prabhupada gave the example that uh, in, to the government all citizens are equal. But in a war situation, the soldiers who are on the front lines, they are given special importance. Other citizens, they may not receive enough food, but the soldiers who have to fight on the front lines to defend the country, they, they make sure that they are properly fed so they can fight properly. The government arranges <coughs> everything because they know that their whole, the whole existence of the country depends upon these frontline soldiers. So in the same way, Prabhupada explained that those uh, soldiers, Sankitan soldiers, who are on the front line distributing Srila Prabhupada's books, they get special favor from Krishna. And even that struggle with the mind and senses is going on. That's actually the best place to, to conduct the struggle. That uh, if you simply try to lock yourself in a way or in a room, or, you won't be successful. But when confronted by Maya like that, you're forced to get serious. You, re you really have to make a decision. And where, where am I going to put my mind today? At the lotus feet of Krishna or, or just let it wander wild? So uh, please take this opportunity. It's a great service. People are getting connected to Krishna through Prabhupada's books. Is Some people take opinion? those books and their lives change. Mm -hmm. But uh, apart from that, there's a general awareness of Krishna consciousness. Has, is being affected by the widespread distribution of Prabhupada's books. It's, it's a gradual effect, but a very powerful effect that is being uh, produced by the ongoing distribution of Prabhupada's books. So this is undoubtedly the best way to spend your youth and your whole life. Usually we find after some time, because of various reasons, maybe often physically or maybe mentally or whatever, it's difficult for devotees to continue all their lives distributing Prophet's books. There are some devotees who do that, but uh, if, if you even only spend a few years, that will be a very great service you will do, and it will help you very much in your progress in Krishna consciousness. And actually, a real Sankirtan devotee never ceases to be a Sankirtan devotee, even if he's not uh, directly full-time engaged in devotional service later on. He'll, he'll always keep that preaching mood. And if you can remain like this, simple brahmachari, simply serving Guru and Krishna throughout your lives, then definitely you'll go back to God. There's another story I heard shortly after coming to the movement. And the devotees said that, Prabhupada, you see, we're out every day distributing your books. And all the time you're having to interact with the karmis. So, how are we going to remember, you know, all the time it's like this. So how are we going to remember Krishna at the time of death? Prabhupada said that if you distribute my books throughout your life, then at the time of death, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will force his way into your mind and drag you, personally drag you back to Godhead. So there's undoubtedly unlimited mercy. This is the real mercy mission. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any questions, comments, stories? Some One devotee used to send all the time to the uh, book distribution seminar conference on Com some stories about his from Czech Republic. Who was that? It's Panchatatva, I think. Uh -huh. You're not sending stories now? We didn't hear any for some time. I have sent so, some stories, but I cannot speak so good English. Yeah, but it's understood. Some, nice so stories. Much not so much time. Yes. It's very inspiring, actually. There's all kinds of mystical things happen when yeah. Sri Gitan. There's Manida Prabhu. He's, uh, he's probably, he must have distributed more books than all of you put together 10 to 20, 20 times over. <laughs> Empowered. Personality. Just to have him here is it's just like a blessing for the whole country. Sometimes I'm amazed at how it could be possible for some devotees, they don't actually want to do such a service and they could, they could distribute a lot of books. And there are also few devotees who uh, want to distribute so many books that, but they cannot. Hmm. What is possible? Yeah, well, it just goes to show that. Sankirtan is not a material activity. Oh, I should translate the, the, the question. Yeah. There's the desire of the devotee and the blessing of the Lord. 
One devotee I was traveling with for several months in England years ago when I was doing traveling sector, and even before I went to India, that means it must have been seven, 1976 or 1977. So he used to go out every day and try hard every day, but he was a very introverted kind of person, and his results weren't very good, actually. But he was praying and praying to try and distribute more books. And uh, eventually he became one of the top Sankirtan devotees in the world. But even if you don't distribute many books, I don't you try. Krishna will be pleased. And every single book you distribute is significant. Here he comes, Jai. He's attracted. When he sees a group of Sankirtan devotees, he becomes attracted. Oh, devotees, they just, uh, yeah. they just put the questions on the paper, so they would like uh -huh. to... Okay. To know the answers. Just as uh, bee is attracted to a sweet smelling flower, uh, or as iron is attracted <coughs> to a magnet, so when you see a group of nice young Sankitan brahmacharis, you have to go. So why don't you ask the questions to Manida Prabhu and you can translate the answers to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is all just a big joke, you know. I'm supposed to be a big. Hmm? <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's just like, you know, Lord Chaitanya used to pass by. It wasn't on their program for people to get his benediction, so... You just passed by, I so... I was more attracted by the accumulation of suffering. <laughs> nice, huh? Yeah, it's very refreshing to see bright young brahmacharis happy to go out on Sankirtan. Prabhupada was so pleased, he used to like that, huh? to see all the brahmacharis yeah, like all lined up with their vans, all lined up with their vans, all ready to go on Sankirtan. Prabhupada loved that. So why don't you ask the question and then you can answer and I'll, I'll give the answer. You can translate it for me. <laughs> Fine, yeah, do you have regular question. meetings with the Sankirtan devotees? Not here, abroad. Here also. I mean, you're going overseas to give your mercy. I mean, uh, over the border, <laughs> you should give it here also. <laughs> There's such a uh, nice Sankirtan spirit here. From time to time, he's spending also with Sankirtan devotees here. <laughs> yeah. There's a good spirit here. Hai dobrei duch Sankirtan. The question is how to avoid the contamination from the street because sometimes young devotees they are criticized, especially the Sankirtan devotees, they, when they come to the temple they behave a little rashly, a little grossly, so how to, how to avoid it? Would you answer that? <laughs> they came here for you and for me. You can answer also. I just answered some questions. You answer, and then I'll answer the next one later. Czech or in English? Why don't you answer in Czech and then uh, Neil Mada can translate for me. It's like someone is driving in the car. Uh. So he's also, uh, to some extent, uh, influenced by the circumstances. Not, not only influenced by the external circumstances, but also he's involved in that. And it influences his thinking and his acting. But when he, he knows when he's going, where he's going, and he has a clear goal where he wants to go, then the external circumstances uh, influence uh, very little his consciousness. On the car, he knows when, uh, with the next person sitting to him, and uh, he's nicely cultivating the driver, then he forgets, you know, about the time and the circumstances he passed through. Mm. So if devotee has a clear goal, if he wants to go, go back on that to God. And in his mind, he's uh, residing next to his spiritual master. Then his external circumstances doesn't influence him. Although he's right inside, in. And he has he to but if he is in the, uh, if he has the attitude to give out, it isolates him or it makes him immune to be influenced. Just like you said in the class, that if we don't, don't preach to the scientists, they will preach to us.
it's false to think that uh, we will just leave and no one, uh, no one preaches to other, to other okay. parts. Okay. Everyone preaches something to other people, yeah. even by his acting, by his, uh, by his uh, consciousness, everything. Which means hedonism, actually, practically speaking. If you don't preach back, tak, uh, if you don't chant back, kaza. they will preach to us. If you don't influence them, they will influence us. As more forcibly we, we, we preach to them, then they less preach to us. And as you said in the class, that the best, uh, best attack is the defense. No, best defense is the f attack. As <laughs> 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 so we are sitting next to the lake, and if we don't, uh, if we stop uh, to to play, I mean to swim, swim then we drown. So the sun is done is little swim. When we leave the temple, then the first we have to have this attitude. Is that we want to give out something. It's our only defense is uh, that all shelter sh sh is to distribute. Does that ad does that answer the question? I understood the question was uh, that the devotees are a little roughly behaved when they come back to the temple. Well, basically, I understood the question that it is how to prevent the external influences on the street, which like make you to act more. Uh -huh. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh. I mean, the question wasn't made very clearly. That they are affected by the external modes from mm. outside mm. and it projects into their own behavior amongst each other in a van. Mm. Oh, then. That's yeah, I just link. wanted yeah. you know, to, to, to make it more sure that that's why I said I'm not sure because it's on them if they yeah. understood. <laughs> it's practically you know, it's practically inevitable that the Sankirtan devotees are they are more lively and a little boisterous than the devotees in the temple. The devotees in the temple are usually a little peaceful and very little spaced out. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Whereas devotees and Sankirtan, they're extremely intense. You have to be, otherwise you can't distribute books. If you just stand on the street corner and say, would you like a book? You're not going to sell anything, is it? You have to really, you have to really concentrate and put your whole mentality onto the person you're speaking to. So it can be a little uh, difficult for the devotees in the temple when the Sankirtan devotees come back. Actually, of course, they should welcome them, and hopefully they do so. Sankirtan devotees should be a little careful not to, you know, over overstep the limits. It's not uncommon, I don't know about here, but in, it's not uncommon in other places that the Sankirtan devotees come back and when they go out again, the whole kitchen goes with them. So, you know, save us time, we, save us time buying new pots and bulgur, we just take it out. Do it. So, better not do that kind of thing. So, either way, whatever the question was, I hope it got answered. So I'm sure you've got like hundreds of funny stories like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, not actually funny. Just, just, you know, I went through a period in Germany, that's 25 years ago, where Sankitan was, uh, when the devotees came to the temple, they were not allowed to come on Sunday. And they was moved actually to Wednesday, because the demolition and the noise they make and everything was interfering with the Sunday feast. <laughs> And the guests actually, get, get frightened. Actually, see, the management in a temple, they got afraid to show the Sankirtan devotees the Sunday feast guests because it was too intense to direct. So they just separated. But actually, they said Wednesday feast and Sunday feast. <laughs> and we traveled from Wednesday to Wednesday. How are you finding the response of the people in general here? How, how do people respond? What's the, how do you find it in general? People, are, they like our books, they're favorable. They must know oh. the Krishna Conscious room by now. Devotees are nice, and people respond according to his attitude. It depends on the attitude of devotees. If they are harsh, then people are also nice. Hmm. So many, many times they have books, and they, they will buy another book. They'll take another one, that's very good. Hmm. Next question uh, How to be detached? from the result and at the same time want as much as big result as possible for Guru and Krishna? Well, I think I already discussed that somewhat when, when I was speaking, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Indi so indirectly. So, so, so that that, that is, as much as we're praying to Guru and Krishna, that much we can distribute books. Because if 
we think that I'm doing, then you can't distribute anything. And uh, understanding that this is the mercy mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we're just praying to him to to bestow his mercy on the conditioned souls. I'm going to give some more angle on that. No, please, say something. This is, you know, as I was saying, uh, yeah, saying before you came here, you must have distributed at least 20 times more than all of the, 20 times more books than all of these devotees put together at least. So how, what's the secret? <laughs> well, it's a straight Bhagavad Gita problem. Mm. Because Arjuna had the same problem. He was attached to a certain concept and lost the original idea that we have to fight as a matter of duty. So if one keeps the aspect of duty in front of one, there should be no big danger of attachment. As a matter of fact, uh, Prabhupada gives the example of a man who counts so much money in a bank but never takes one penny for himself and he goes home. Sankirtan is not that much different. So if the aspect of duty is understood, there is no need to uh, be uh, overly attached to any kind of result, bad one or good one. It's natural that the devotee wants to do more and more. But it cannot bring him to the point of being desperate and paralyzed so he cannot do anything. That's a judgment. Quickly. Yeah. It said that the, the Sankirtan purifies everything. And uh, uh, then uh, how is it possible that we feel the purification only when we distribute less or very little? Yeah, it said that the, 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 the Sankirtan is all purifying. In every circumstance, it, it purifies you uh-huh, know, uh-huh. The, the, the person. But uh, how is that we feel the purification only when we distribute little? What does that mean? That then you're praying more for Krishna's mercy or something? Because you're suffering, you're feeling like you're purifying more? So when you distribute little, then after you come back to when, then you feel you know some change in the heart, some purification in the heart. And you, you, know, you know about the mistakes what you did, you know, during the time of the distribution. But when you come and you distributed a lot, relatively a lot, then, you know, sometimes, you know, there is not, nothing like this feeling, you know, of purification. And, and you don't know, you know, what was going on. You, know, you don't feel that, that satisfaction. Uh, purification, it, it doesn't... It doesn't. It can't necessarily be measured about what we feel subjectively at any moment. It's a it's a long, ongoing process. There are ups and downs in our progress towards Krishna. Like on a graph, you see like this. So there are ups and downs, but there's, you can also make a, a straight line which shows the general direction. So as long as it's going gradually up, the ups and downs don't matter so much. It may be that we're f- feeling more pure, we're, we're more introspective because we're more in need of it at that time. I'm saying something more about that? Mm-hmm. The thing is, you see, whatever we're doing in Christian service, we shouldn't put, we shouldn't put in one sense, we should. We should be very concerned about our consciousness. But on the other, on the other hand, we shouldn't be like too much concerned with our mental state. Mm. How I am feeling, like Manindra Prabhu was saying, is our duty to go on with our service. Even our mind is nonsense. That we know already. But anyway, we should go on with our duty. Introspection should be there, but not to the extent that we become paralyzed by self-psychoanalysis. That should be our determination that I have to serve whether in loss or gain, in happiness or defeat, whatever, Krishna told Arjuna, it's your duty to fight. If you do like that, then you'll be, you won't be affected by sin. So many devotees, and devotees have the experience then that while on Sankirtan they try to meditate. Uh, how to be detached, how to depend on Krishna, and afterwards, you know, they distribute very, very little. Hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> what to do? Well, there's always these two extremes which are mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, it's uh, 
One thing, if, you, if you're saying that, well, you're depending on Krishna's mercy, uh, and therefore, you know, you're trying to concentrate like that and becoming detached, and therefore you distribute less, there may be some misunderstanding there also. You should depend on Krishna's mercy, be detached, Can and you? pray with every atom in your body, and try fully, to the best of your ability, to distribute the book also. No, it's the same cool thing. A detachment doesn't mean that, and, and depending on which direction, doesn't mean you just like stand in the corner and hold the book and you know be detached. I'm being today. I'm being detached. Depending on Krishna's mercy. If anyone comes up to me and takes a book, that's very good. A bit odpoutani. I'm detached. Just like Krishna told Arjuna, you, you be detached and fight. So fighting is an activity in which, you, if you think, well, yeah, I just be detached, you get your head cut off immediately. So internally one cultivates a sense of dependence on Krishna, but one has to try fully. We have to make our endeavor also. So detached doesn't mean not doing anything. Detached means to work with full endeavor and, and not try to be the enjoyer of the result. <laughs> that Krishna didn't tell to Arjuna simply, he will do it. Arjuna, you can sit in a back, relax and smoke ganja. <laughs> <laughs> how to not how to not be artificial in dealing with people how to not be artificial in dealing with people and at the same time to keep our enthusiasm even when the things goes I mean when the distribution goes wrong or you can I, I don't see how the two things are related what's the what's the direct relationship between the two things the, the relationship that the, if you try to keep nice relationship with people and you cannot distribute then you know your behavior 
toward them can change into roughness or whatever. Well, it's the same thing. We have to try and distribute the books and not, not be attached to the result. It's not easy, but that's our... Uh, that's the practice by which we become mature. That means we have to constantly preach the message of Bhagavad Gita to ourselves. Say something more? Yeah, okay. All right, you answer the next one directly. To what extent can the proper sadhana and good japa substitute, to be the substitute for the Harinams and, and uh, the, 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 the together kirtan in front of the deities? Because they are, uh, they are very often, you know, uh, they are always out, so they have no opportunity to, to do those activities. Hmm? understand this either or either logic behind the whole thing. Translate? Like they are conflicting these activities? Uh, no. He's actually basically asking about uh, they feel alike as Sankitan devotees, the iron arms and the big kirtans in front of the deities. Basically their activities are contained to the van and the traveling. So if there is, if these you know, chanting in a band and kirtan in a band and book distribution can actually in a long term I guess replace, you know, or if they are not lacking something they should maybe work on that and, you know. So you answer. Mm. It's your turn. So far we can remember Shri Prabhupada gave always priority to book distribution. But of course, that cannot go on the cost of chanting and the basic sadhana. But he never said, where, why are the book distributors not on every Harinam? Because Iskon went through a very interesting shift, because in the beginning there was only Harinam, there was no books. And then the whole, much of the Harinam shifted to the book distribution. And they would start to ask this kind of questions. Prabhupada was very much valuing book distribution. So we call it Brihat Medanga. But that doesn't exclude if we have the opportunity to go on Harinam. And everybody knows the Harinam with a really hungry Sankitan devotees is fantastic. In detail, how to combine these two things, this is a question of discussing with the local management. Like we had the days in Germany where the Water Summit saw that despite heavy, you know, really heavy German kind of work, the Sankitan went down. Germans know how to work hard for nothing. So what he did is he said, okay, on Saturday, no more book distribution, we all go on Harinam. And this was going on for quite a while. There was no loss in the results of book distribution, because anyway it went down. It went actually up. And then I don't remember exactly, then on a certain point we were going again distributing Saturday also. So I'm not saying that this is like the cure and we should do like that, but like I said, it's to be discussed with the local management. Sometimes our devotees, they all used to get together at the end of the day, and wherever they'd been and do half an hour, Harinam to finish off the day. So there are different possibilities. <laughs> it's very sweet actually doing Harinam in just like you. In some really small village where they never heard it. <laughs> what role plays the material qualifications <coughs> of the Kirtan? Uh, it may temporarily uh, have, apparently have some role. That means someone who's uh, you know, they're outgoing and they, they naturally have a gregarious nature and it may be easier for them to do the book distribution in the short term. But in the long term, if they, if they don't have a very s genuine spiritual desire to do so, they won't be able to do so, even if they're apparently uh, very materially qualified. On the other hand, I was given that example of the very introverted devotee who, who was trying hard for many months and then... Krishna blessed him and then he became a very big distributor Another he was very sincere so ultimately Sankirtan is a completely spiritual activity purity is the force there is no matter answer to this I just told them I couldn't answer it hmm. and you answer the next one <laughs> <laughs> Should we approach on the street everyone or only those who, whom we feel we can approach or be successful in dealing with them? 
Actually, as long one thinks like this, one has a little problem. But this means he will spend lots of energy by evaluating people coming to him. There is another level of Sankirtan, one doesn't do this anymore. One just sees an ocean of conditioned souls, one goes out, one is empowered, one turns around and goes to the first one one meets. Uh, he doesn't uh, ask his rationality or his mind to his, which one is qualified here to take. We call it the good stream and the bad stream on the street. Some or other, the same shopping street, the same karmis, but one devotee is struggling like anything, going from one demon to another, and the other one, he has a good time. Sometimes they ask the practice in Germany, where do you find all these nasty Christians? I cannot see them. <laughs> Send me one too, I like to eat them. <laughs> yes, some really nice nasty Christians, I like to eat them. But I couldn't find them, but the bhakta he was full of them, you know, they were just sitting on him like mosquitoes. The Sankitan is not based on this rationalizing so much. It's a question of being sincere, or as my life said, purity is the force. And just turns around and tries the best to the first one. To discriminate too much is not very helpful. The, dis the discriminating people will be automatically happening if one is empowered. I will be kept out, out of the reach of these, you know, atheistic, really atheistic ones, and one will be drawn to the more pious one. There are quite many sets sitting in a lager, and uh, authorities, they request Sankirtan devotees to distribute those sets, but uh, uh, those Sankirtan devotees, they have a hard time to, to relate to, the, to those uh, wealthy people because mostly they, should, they, they have to distribute it in the shops and offices and they have no experience and they are not skilled in that kind of distribution. So if you can give some inspiration to them. Well, how did you learn to do the book distribution that you're doing at the present time? It's partially by associating with others who are doing it and also because you pray to Krishna to give you the ability to do it. But I would suggest that more mature Sankirtan devotees take that up. It can be done, certainly it can be done. It, I would suggest that more mature Sankirtan devotees, ah, mature. Say, I wouldn't send new bhaktas on such a program. Uh, it, it certainly can be done, but it's a great challenge also. So I, I suggest you discuss that with your temple authorities, huh? how, how this should, could and should be done. It, it probably requires... Um, some it is it's definitely a different technique to that of going shop to shop it may not be such a quick sell you have to, Prabhupada said we have to uh, strain our brains to think of the ways and means to spread this Krishna conscious movement so it requires some uh, thought how to do it some, some brainstorming you say something more about that? I was never a big set distributor. <coughs> I was more the small guy distributing lots of books one by one. It might be useful to ask those who actually really did that. In Czech Republic, one devotee, Jai Gurudev, he was very specialized in that. I guess Parasa Muni also did quite something in this regard. Hmm? Parasa, he also did something. But so much I saw and time. Uh, but it's, as Mara said, it's not for everybody. Now, one thing you're saying, you meet a lot of favorable people. Do you, do you keep their names and, and give them to the temple to put in their database? Do you have any such thing going on? Yeah, yeah. You do like that. So that would be the, uh, the, I would think that would be the starting ground is the database, people who I know are already favorable. Like that. It's, it's, it's actually, in, in many ways, a different program to that of the Sangitan devotees going out in vans, just meeting people one-off. Mm. It, it, it requires some special strategy and thinking. Probably, put, probably the best thing would be to put two or three of the uh, more mature Sangitan devotees and give them the mission to find out the ways and means to do this. But so I think this is something to take back to the temple authorities and discuss with them. It's most likely not going to happen just by them asking you to do it. You have to, you have to work out how to approach the problem. So that's all. Jai. Basically, that's all what we wanted to ask. So Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please go on with this. It's a very glorious service. Every book you distribute is a significant step forward for the Sankirtan movement. Every single book. That's the most important thing that ever happened to that person in millions of lifetimes.
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. He wants the darshan with you and he doesn't know which time will be suitable for you. Well, uh, sometime between now and 3.30 tomorrow morning when I'm leaving. Yeah, that's okay. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, he could come with me to Ljubljana, but it's probably better to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'll be busy there too. So. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Mark. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare